By the end of October, recipients of the Empire State Child Credit or the Earned Income Credit are supposed to receive a check in the mail as part of a nearly half a billion dollar tax relief program included in the state budget this year that targets nearly 1.8 million low-income New Yorkers and families. The initiative is expected to be worth an average payment of $270 per eligible recipient. To discuss the benefit of this program and much more, we're joined on the Capitol Press Room by Daniel Hemmel, a professor of law at New York University School of Law. Welcome to the show, Daniel. Thanks for having me here. So for starters, if someone is eligible for this additional child uh, and earned income tax payment, uh, they need to have claimed either the Empire State Child Credit or the Earned Income Credit or or both on their 2021 state tax returns. Uh, So what sort of conditions would make a New Yorker eligible for those uh, benefits? What does that taxpayer look like? For the Earned Income Tax Credit, uh, you need to earn income and your income needs to be below. Uh, if you're single and you've got two kids, it's a little less than $50,000 a year. Uh, if you're married and you have two kids, it's a little more than $50,000 a year. The Empire State Child Credit, in order to be eligible, you need to have kids who are at least four years old and less than 17 years old. And you mentioned that they need to be at least four years old, and that's something we're going to talk about later in this interview. But let's we'll first focus on this payment, um, which is worth uh, an average of two hundred and seventy dollars uh, per eligible recipients. What does that number mean to New Yorkers who receive uh, that check in October? Uh, well, two hundred and seventy dollars uh, helps a lot if you're a low income New Yorker. It doesn't make you rich, uh, but you'll appreciate it. The amount will vary a lot across individuals. Uh, So the way that this check is going to be calculated is whatever you got as your New York earned income tax credit for 2021, uh, you get 25% times that in this check. Um, And then whatever you got as your Empire State child credit, you get a percentage of that that's based on your income. So if your income is less than $10,000, you get 100% of the credit that you got for your 2021 return. If your income is between 25,000 and 50,000, you get 50% of the credit that you got uh, on your 2021 return. And do we have any sense based on past studies or government data on how low-income New Yorkers or just in general low-income people uh, around the country, even if, if they have kids or don't have kids, might spend this type of money? Is it something that uh, just goes toward paying whatever bills they have? Does it go toward a, a luxury item that they might not have been able to afford? Does it go right into savings for a rainy day? What do we know? We know from the big COVID-19 relief package that was passed in March 2021 uh, that increased the child tax credit. People are using this for food. They're using this for rent. Maybe a little bit of it is going to a rainy day fund. Maybe a little bit of it is going to uh, pay child care expenses, uh, but it's going for needs. People aren't going off and taking cruises. And we know from longer term studies uh, that the effects on kids whose families get cash uh, are pretty significant. They are less likely to be involved in crime. They're more likely to stay in school. Um, Their health outcomes improve. Uh, So material deprivation in early childhood is really bad, and fixing that is really good. So you mentioned that idea of a cruise, but would it be bad public policy uh, or a mistake for families to spend this money uh, toward a vacation, especially if they couldn't afford one w- without uh, this additional payment? Yeah, I think if families use this to buy a tent and um, go camping at an upstate park, uh, that's great. If it's giving kids new opportunities that they otherwise wouldn't have, that's great. Um, but in order to be eligible for the EITC at all, if you're married and two kids, uh, that you can't be earning more than $54,000 a year. Uh, so if you're thinking married, two kids, uh, the combined couple income is less than $54,000 in a high cost of living place like New York, um, 
those folks aren't getting onto planes and going to Paris or Hawaii. So the benefit is being delivered in the form of a check that's sent out uh, by the end of October. Is that the best way to provide this type of relief? Ideally, this would be recurring. So the state assembly and state senate and governor agreed to this one-off supplement uh, for 2022. Um, One challenge of poverty is that it's destabilizing. So we would prefer that the payment come through stability. Um, But if we're going to make a one-off payment, uh, then yeah, this is a pretty good way. Um, People get it at the end of October or earlier and they can cash the check. Um, I mean, the number one problem facing low-income New Yorkers is that they don't have enough income. uh, And the easiest way to deal with that is to give them more income. For listeners just joining us, you're listening to the Capitol Press Room, and we're speaking with Daniel Hemmel, a professor of law at New York University School of Law. And New York has a persistent problem when it comes to uh, child poverty. Uh, We recently created in law a child poverty uh, task force, which is assigned uh, with coming up with policy solutions to uh, reduce these rates by at least half over the next uh, 10 years. Um, In the interim, though, how important are either tax credits, uh, rebates, or just payments like this in combating child poverty? I think they're really important. Uh, so child poverty is um, its a real problem in New York. Uh, our child poverty rate measured by the supplemental poverty measure is two percentage points higher than the nationwide average. And we're the richest state uh, by GDP per capita in the country. So it's somewhat of a shame that uh, like a, a real blot on New York's record, uh, that here we are the richest state, and yet we have a child poverty rate that's above the national average. The easiest way to deal with this is to give money to low-income families. That addresses the child poverty challenge. Whether you call it a rebate or a tax credit or a cash payment doesn't really matter at the end of the day if it's dollars going into the family's hands. At the top of the interview, you mentioned the way the Empire State Child Credit works in terms of the ages of kids that are eligible and noted uh, that it it begins taking effect at the age of four. Uh, Does that make sense? No, this is totally crazy. Uh, The first time that I saw this in the New York State tax law, I assumed it was a typo. Uh, No other state cuts off young kids from the child credit. Some states give larger credits to younger kids. We think the effects of poverty are most deleterious in the early years of life. Uh, And it's also the early years of life when parents don't have the state taking care of their kids during the day, when they're not yet eligible for universal pre-K or for kindergarten. Um, So we get it completely wrong uh, by cutting off kids who are under four. And There's legislation that's pending in the Assembly and the State Senate, didn't make it through in the last cycle, but hopefully will in the next, uh, sponsored in the Assembly by Andrew Hevesy and in the Senate by Jeremy Cooney, uh, that would address this. Um, But so far, Governor Hochul hasn't embraced this idea. If we were to expand the age eligibility, do we go right to you know, one day old kids, or is it one year olds, two year olds, three year olds? What do you view view as the threshold that makes sense? Birth. Uh, The federal government, the federal child tax credit starts at birth. Every other state starts at birth, or there are some states now that uh, are moving to before birth. Uh, So this is Hmm. uh, pro-life advocates want, and they believe that childhood begins before the time of birth. So they want the child tax credit to also begin before the time of birth. But birth seems like a pretty good bright line. Um, Kids get a lot more expensive once they exit the womb. And in terms of how much this would cost, uh, are we thinking this is a multi-million dollar expansion? Is this tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars? 
billions of dollars? And does that tab go to the state or are there federal funds that New York would be able to access uh, to pay this expanded uh, bill if we were to uh, lower the age? All we were to do were to lower the age. Uh, The costs would be in the hundreds of millions. Uh, And just to put this in perspective, the state budget for this fiscal year is $220.5 billion. Uh, So it would be a very, very, very tiny drop in the bucket. The Hevesy Cooney bill is more ambitious than that. It would make the child credit for kids under four $1,000. And then for kids from four through 16, uh, it would be um, $500. Um, right now, the maximum child credit is $333 in New York. That would cost in total $1.5 billion. Uh, but again, $1.5 billion, we're talking about well less than 1% of a $220.5 billion state budget. And to put the benefits of this in perspective, uh, that reform alone, the Hevesy Cooney reform, Uh, would bring 27,000 kids across the state out of poverty and would make a meaningful difference in the lives of hundreds of thousands more. When you think about the best way to implement something like this, does it make sense to have this tied to income or should all New York families be eligible for this type of benefit regardless of uh, how much money they, they, they make, uh, either because that's just good policy to pay for kids or, or because that might make this more uh, politically uh, appealing to people if uh, everyone benefits? There are two issues here. The first is, what should we do about people at the very low end of the income spectrum? And New York totally insanely gives a smaller child tax credit to lower income people. Uh, So it's the parents who need the money the most who get the smaller credit. You have to be in the, um, depending on how many kids you have, uh, you have to be earning several thousand dollars before you can uh, be eligible for the full uh, $333 state credit. Um, And if you have multiple kids, you have to get into the the 10,000 plus uh, in order to be eligible uh, for the full credit. On the high end, It's a matter of cost. The advocates for the child tax credit, uh, for child tax credit expansion, normally focus on low income and middle income families and are less concerned about high income families because their kids aren't in poverty. I think probably in our ideal system, uh, we'd have a child credit for every child. uh, But if you're trying to cut costs somewhere, it makes some sense to do it at the high end. And the polling data suggests that uh, a child credit with an income limit is actually more popular. Um, but the, the cutoff for low-income families is just totally crazy. Well, we've been speaking with Daniel Hemmel. He's a professor of law at New York University School of Law. Daniel, thank you so much for making the time. I really appreciate it. And for more Capital Press Room content, visit our website, capitalpressroom.org, or check out wherever you download your favorite podcasts. Support for the Capitol Press Room is provided by New York State United Teachers, a union of professionals in education, human services, and healthcare. Join us again for Capitol Press Room, a production of WCNY Connected, Syracuse.